hello and welcome back guys to my channel which is named Annie psychology and here i am today with a new and a fresh topic so we are going to discuss on that let's start let's see what's that so today's psychological based topic is phobias and paranoias So let's discuss the, what is phobia first of all the definition of a phobia so a phobia is a persistent excessive unrealistic fear of an object person animal activity or any kind of situation it is a type of anxiety disorders also we can say one of a part of it a person with a phobia or with the kind of excessive fear which is also called phobia tries to avoid the thing that triggers the fear of or endures it with great anxiety and distress there are a huge number of phobias Phobias, as we can search on Google too if you want to many of them are very common but some of them are very limited which is like uh, very extraordinary to find in someone in someone's uh, body in someone's mind so today first of all we will discuss about what are phobias and we will discuss about some extraordinary phobias and fears and which are very common fears first of all we will start from some uncommon and extraordinary fears which is also called phobias let's see from first so first and common phobia we are going to discuss about is isoptrophobia. So as you can see on the screen, isoptrophobia is a fear of mirrors. Sufferers are often un unable to look at themselves in mirror. Like in more severe cases, this anxiety can also extend to see or avoid reflective surfaces like glass. Like any kind of glass material, any kind of glass substance, any kind of glass, even the glass you are drinking the water in and even you are not likely to see yourself in the mirrors. And if we talk about that what can cause someone to develop isoptrophobia in themselves so first of all we can say seeing something supernatural or we can say unnatural thing in a mirror like which is some kind of occult signs or something second one will be breaking of a mirror suddenly on your face or any kind of burst of it or excess feeling of being cursed with bad luck and low confidence too and an aversion to seeing oneself like they have no confidence or they think that their self-esteem is kind of low so they don't want to see themselves in the mirror so this can all depression and turmoil also can cause the isoptrophobia which is called fear of mirrors now we are going to know about the second uncommon phobia which is on the screen globophobia as you can see. So globophobia is a fear of balloons you know this phobia originates from a traumatic or any kind of repressive in event in past days or in your past life especially an incident happened at a young age or you can say at your childhood mostly it affects that part that phase of your life sufferers of this phobia or globophobia will avoid themselves from balloons and prohibit and taboo themselves from being around places that simply may have balloons like birthday parties or any kind of events and functions so this is a phobia of uh, like fear of balloons they don't want to go near balloons and what can cause someone to develop globophobia what can be the cause so the cause can be if in my outlook the cause can be the sudden burst of balloon in front of anyone which may or may not harm oneself maybe it harm your face maybe it harm your like eyes or any kind of sensitive part of your face when the sudden burst of balloon took place or fear of clowns also you can say you know the jokers fear of jokers some children they they scare from them a lot because clowns always the joker always carry balloons so because of that fear also automatically one can cure globophobia also so this was globophobia fear of balloons now we will move to the third uncommon phobia which is as you can see on the screen nomophobia so nomophobia is a fear of being without your phone without your mobile phone like being far away from your phone not able to catch it, not able to hold it not able to be with that your phone people with nomophobia experience excessive anxiety about not having their phone with them not having their mobile and cell phones with them their battery being low like of phone like if the battery is like 60% or 50% they don't want to like 
get it low they just want it being 90% or 100% this is the kind of uh, fear of your battery being low of your phone in nomophobia person affected from this phobia want their phone batteries always 100% or 90% not less than 90% this phobia often uh, stems from a person having a cell phone addiction also you know nowadays people and teenagers and adolescents having even the peer groups in your if you see in your peer groups you can see that so many people are affected from the cell phone addiction too so this is also this can also cause nomophobia obsessively checking their phones throughout the day unnecessarily without any kind of reason they want their phone for always for all the time this is also called the symptoms of the nomophobia so this nomophobia is equal to we can say also cell phone addiction too as you can see in the screen like people who love their phone so much they will take their phone everywhere even they are eating food they are sleeping they will not sleep they will sleep in the midnight which is not the time to which is not the good schedule to sleep they will have their phone when they are eating they will have their phone when they are going to lose they will have their phone even when they are sleeping they won't sleep because just the phone so this is a very kind of a common also but this is very rare but nowadays this is very common because sometimes it used to be very rare because the phone were not used that much but nowadays it's very very much common so now we will go towards fourth uncommon phobia which is as you can see on the screen ablutophobia so ablutophobia is a fear of bathing yes this is a fear of bathing this is a very kind of excessive fear of bathing this phobia is a fear of bathing washing or cleaning oneself yourself people with this phobia avoid bathing and showering which can lead to unpleasant body odor can sometimes subsequent social isolation as well because no one likes to be with a person or with that individual then who doesn't take bath who has a fear of bathing no one would like to be with that person so this phobia most often occurs in children and resolves with age because you know the children mostly they like to just go play and everything just they don't want to indulge in any other part of activities but this phobia is also happened can you can see in adults also so this phobia is related to aquaphobia which is also the fear of water someone who is having fear of water which is also called aquaphobia so automatically they will have ablutophobia as because fear of bathing and bathing doesn't occur without water so aquaphobia and ablutophobia both they can consider the same so this was the last uncommon fourth phobia which was ablutophobia fear of bathing now we will go towards the very common factors when the common phobias and fears which is related to psychological department also so here we're gonna start from the very first common phobia which is acrophobia let's see what's that so acrophobia is a kind of fear of heights everyone if you ask to someone mostly you can find people who have fear of heights this fear can lead to anxiety attacks and avoidance of high places such as bridges towers and tall buildings severe fear of acrophobia and heights can result in panic attacks and violent behavior when reached on height for example someone who has acrophobia and he reaches to the height he will react to his behavior will be violent and kind of unusual so this was acrophobia and why it happens if any kind of traumatic incident occurred in past or any kind of accident that had huge huge impact on any kind of individual related to height if he falls down like for example if he fall down some day or in their past life if they had any kind of traumatic and repressed kind of incident or accident happened which has a very huge impact on them so that's why it can cause acrophobia the fear of heights now we will go to the second very common phobia this is very very much common which is cynophobia Cynophobia is a fear of dogs. It is an irritational and excessive fear from puppies also and dogs also. Even from the small puppies, the person will think that the small puppies can be the huge to cut him or bite him because this is a fear of cynophobia. Being unable to walk down a certain street because they know that there are dogs residing there. This avoidance can impact individuals' daily life and make it difficult to get to their work, school, or any kind of institutions and events outside of home. Like they will scare to go outside of the home because. Because they know there is certain kind of a place where the dogs are residing so that's why they have a fear of dogs which is also called cynophobia so let's see why it happens it is often associated with the personal experience of individual like of a human such as in past or in their earlier time they are bitten by a dog now or during even childhood also so bitten by a dog in like this for their personal experiences so that that's why also the cynophobia can take place in someone's mind now we'll go towards third common uh, phobia which is astrophobia 
this is also very common in most in the children also so astrophobia is a fear of thunder and lightning you know the thunders thunderstorms when the rain is coming when happened so people or sufferers we can say of this phobia astrophobia experience overwhelming or nervousness kind of feelings when the rain is coming because they have a fear that the thunderstorms and the lightning will also come when they encounter such a weather related phenomena like the rain is coming so they just want to hide somewhere because they don't want to experience any kind of a thunderstorm around there so during a thunder or lightning or a storm or any kind of lightning storm people with this disorder or we can say phobia astrophobia may go to hide from the weather they will cover themselves in the bed in the covers sheets or closing oneself in bathroom or closet also like they will close themselves in bathroom or closet any kind of a like you know almira or somewhere just they want to hide from the thunderstorms and the lightning because they have a kind of astrophobia which is fear of thunders and lightnings now we will go to the fourth point a uh, very common phobia which is trypanophobia as you can see on the screen let's see what's that so trypanophobia is uh, a fear of injections like trypanophobia is a fear of injections when people or individuals or human with this phobia do have to take an injection they may experience feelings of extreme dread elevated heart rate and very um, like very increased pulse rate as they are very uh, much uh, like they want to avoid the needles of injections because they have very kind of a fear which is trypanophobia so leading up to the screaming during the procedure in this condition people avoid medical treatments and doctors too because they don't want to go to the doctor if they are feeling sick because they know maybe the doctor will prescribe them any kind of injection which is very necessary for them at the phase of time because they are feeling sick so that's why they just don't want to go to through any kind of medical treatment and doctors and even if they have to get uh, they have to get any kind of injection with the needle so they will leading up to end with the screaming during the procedure they will scream a lot they will have elevated heart rate increased pulse rate everything but they just don't want to experience any kind of injections in their life because they have trypanophobia which is called fear of injections now we'll go through our last and fifth very common phobia which is mysophobia let's see what's that so mysophobia is a fear of germs and dirt and filth germs and bacteria for example people with this phobia can engage in extreme cleaning compulsive hand washing and even avoidance of things or situations perceived as dirty like for example they don't to want to do any work which they consider that okay after doing this work we will be dirty or we have to take bath so they will not do that work because they consider it as a dirt so they will wash their hand very much very like very certainly and they would just don't want to be in any contact with any kind of a dirty or filthy thing which can cause them to go towards like cleaning themselves but this phobia may be also related to ocd ocd is very famous like very common obsessive compulsive disorder in this disorder or we can say fear this is a fear of getting dirt getting dirty and getting filthy by doing or sun going in any kind of situation which perceived as dirty so mysophobia is a fear of germs bacteria dirt and filth which can cause someone to do over cleaning and over washing their themselves so guys here we have discussed about very uncommon and common phobias also but here now we will discuss how to treat any kind of a phobia so phobias are treated with a combination of therapies and medications also both the combination of therapy and medications the most effective treatment for specific phobia is a type of psychotherapy so called also exposure therapy during exposure therapy you work with a psychologist to learn how to disentangle your fear like the psychologist will help you to get uh, apart from your fear if you are fearing from like if you have astrophobia so the ex psychologist will provide you to go somewhere where the rain is coming with the psychologist and with the helpers they can help you when you have any kind of a panic attack or any kind of anxiety attack so they will teach you how to like learn to come overcome your phobias and your fears So this treatment which is called exposure therapy helps you change your thoughts and feelings about the object or situation so that you can learn to control your reaction according to the therapies. Exposure therapy is very famous therapy to overcome from your any kind of phobia or fear, excessive fear. Medications too also can help you to reduce uncomfortable feelings of anxiety, panic and fear when you are going through any kind of anxiety or excessive fear.
towards that so now we will go to the second part of our topic which is what is paranoia so we will discuss the definition and what is paranoia so paranoia is the feeling that you are being threatened in some way such as people watching you or acting against you even though there is no proof that it's true you will feel something that in paranoia like someone is being back of you someone is coming in behind you someone is like uh, someone is stalking you you will always feel like fear you will always feel the kind of scaredness that someone is uh, about to harm you someone is coming to harm you so you will be always like you will be very responsible for yourself and you will be like you'll be an eye watcher for yourself like you don't want something bad happens because this is a clinical paranoia is more severe condition may related to schizophrenia also schizophrenia is a very major and severe kind of disorder in psychology it is also related to that so it is a rare mental health condition in which you believe that others are unfair to you they are lying to you or actively trying to harm you actively trying to disturb your daily lives you don't think you are a paranoid like you are suffering from a paranoia at all because you feel everything around you is very sure and very true so everyone saying you know it's not that kind of thing no one is trying to come to you no one is trying to harm to you but you will think no it is everything is real everything is real but no one has proved that someone is coming behind you or someone is threatening you in any kind of a way because you are suffering from a paranoia and you are a paranoid in this way so here we got to know what is a paranoia now let's see what are the symptoms the major symptoms and very common symptoms of paranoia so first symptom is not being able to trust people like if you are a paranoid so you will think that everyone around you is like doing very much unfair to you and lying to you or threatening you or becoming your enemy so you will not trust anyone being your defensive second one is being over defensive and aggressive in any kind of a way like you are walking just you will be over defensive for yourself like you will have very kind of an urge that you have to take your own responsibility because no one is going to help you and everyone around you is just misbehaving with you even there is nothing like that nothing is true truth in that third one is believing your you're always right you will not think that someone is if you, they are advising you to heed it you will not take it and you will think that you are only right because you have an extreme like you can say in like for example in schizophrenia it's like same in paranoia so fourth is not being able to compromise or forgive anyone because you think they have done very wrong with you instead they have not done anything with you still you will think that okay they have done something but they have not done anything you will create your own imaginary perceptions and which is having no proof of that so these were the symptoms of paranoia now we'll see what can cause paranoia causes of paranoia so paranoid behavior usually occurs due to personality disorders or other mental illness such as schizophrenia as i told you and personality disorders also as the same it may be a combination factors including your genetics like from your genes stress and brain chemistry also which has gone disturbed stress psychiatric disorders such as paranoid personality disorder as i told you and schizophrenia use of harmful addictive drugs and alcohol can worsen paranoid person if affected in a person like like obviously a paranoid paranoid is a person who is affected from a paranoia so and memory loss also if they have gone through any kind of a traumatic incident or accident which caused them alzheimer which is also called memory loss that, that can also be the cause of paranoia so this was it i hope you like today's topic and i hope you find it very knowledgeable what was the topic today it was the phobias and paranoias so i hope you liked it and if you like it just you can give me a like and if you want to share any kind of review or you want to tell me any kind of advice which i can heed so you can just tell me in comment box and thank you for watching my video if you want to share you can share with the people who can be more interested to know about such topics so thanks for watching my video i hope you have a very nice day thank you bye bye